Welcome back Forward Youth. We are here with another D Group session. And before we get started, I just wanted to ask you guys a quick question. When something awesome happens in your life, what do you usually do with that? Maybe for some of you guys, you rush right to Instagram or Snapchat and you post it online and you tell all your friends that way. Maybe there's a person that you just need to call or text right away. Uh, maybe uh, you know you go to a great concert or a sporting event and you have to get the t-shirt or uh, you know you run it and you have to go down to like the backstage area and get an autograph in some way you feel like you need to commemorate that awesome experience for me one of the things that we've done over the last couple of years is for my father's day present I get this photo collage so every year Laura makes me one of these, and it just is basically all of our awesome family memories put together in one big picture. And if you ever hang out with me in my office, you can look through all the pictures and see all the fun stuff that we've done together as a family. Most of those were Myrtle Beach, because who doesn't love being on a beach? Uh, over the last couple of years, haven't been able to do that. So one of the things we started doing was on our trailer, we get a sticker from every campground that we camp at, and we plaster that on there. I think most of us, when something great happens in our life, we want to do something with that information. We want to mark it so that we remember it and we don't forget that great thing that happened. So I'd love for you guys, as we start tonight, to talk together as a D group and say, uh, what's something great that's happened in your life? What's the best experience you've happened, had happened maybe in the last two years? And then did you do anything to remember it? Did you tell somebody? Did you, did you create a picture collage or something like that? So take a few minutes and chat together as a D group now. I hope you guys had some fun recounting some great experiences and figuring out how you guys typically celebrate those things. And so what we're gonna talk about tonight is baptism, which is really this celebration of the great thing that God has done in us and for us. So practically, if baptism is a, a new idea to you, simply what it is, is entering into water. So for our tradition, that means a full dunking under the water. So you get into either a big tank of water or a pool or a river or pond or something like that. And then a pastor asks you a couple of questions about whether or not you're following Jesus. And then we dunk you down and pull you back up. And that going underwater and then coming back up is a way that we tell the story and mark the work that Jesus has done. It tells of his, his death and burial and his being raised to new life. And then through this special memory, this sacrament or ordinance of baptism, those are some fancy church words, those remembrances of what God has done, we join together with him and identify ourselves as God's children, as part of his family who are joined together in Jesus. And, you know, as we're heading into Easter, this is a perfect time to remember that story. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is what we as followers of Jesus build our lives on. So baptism holds this special place for us as his followers. And it has a really important function for us because the magic in the mystery isn't in the water itself. It's in the reminder of the great work that God has done. It's us going back and remembering and marking the incredible work that God has done for us. So baptism does a couple of things, and I'm gonna read a verse from the book of Galatians, chapter three, 26 through 28. For you are all God's children through faith in Jesus Christ. And all who've been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for we are all one in Jesus Christ. One of the key functions of what baptism does is that it reminds us that we belong to God and we are part of his family. When you walk through the Bible, they use big fancy words, and one of the ones that comes up a bunch is covenant. And this covenant is used to describe the relationship between God and his people. The people who follow God and identify with him and are marked out as separate for God and God himself. 
Now, covenant is more than just like a contract or agreement. It's this deep commitment between two people or two groups of people that they are going to uh, be involved with and connected with and seek the good of the other. It's committing yourself fully to that person. So think it's more like a marriage than it is like some sort of arrangement. And then covenants always have symbols to secure and remind them. So think about this, like I got a wedding ring right here. Laura and I got married almost 16 years ago. And this is a reminder that follows me around, that lets the world know and reminds me that I'm not just belonging to myself, that I also belong to my wife and we are united together in the covenant of marriage. And baptism is this reminder that we don't just belong to ourselves, we actually belong to God and are a part of his family. So it's an, it's an outward symbol of an inward reality that has taken place. It's a little bit like going to get the souvenir from the vacation or the band t-shirt. It's this reminder of this great thing that has happened. It's a reminder to you and I of the baptism. When we go through baptism, it reminds us that we belong to God and we are accepted by him and a part of his family. It's not something we need to earn, not something we need to work for, not something that we need to achieve in and of ourselves. It's something that has already been accomplished for us. And it's not just that we belong to God, while that is true, it's even more than that. We get invited into a bigger story and we get invited into a family. The Bible often uses language like adoption, that God loved and adopted us into his family. So you're you're just part of a family, right? Like, as embarrassed as you are of your parents and your siblings at times, they're just your family and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just a reality that you are now stuck with. Maybe you've been uh, in this experience, you, you go into class on the first day, the teacher's like, oh, Andrew, uh, is your brother Richie? And then you're like, oh no, they know my brother. I'm in so much trouble. And maybe that's because you're, your brother or sister was the like goody two shoes who's always like got all the high grades and you're like that is not going to be me or your brother or sister was a troublemaker in class causing all the problems and now you're like that wasn't me or maybe it is and and you get that or maybe maybe you've done this my kids would never do this to me and i would never do it to my parents but you just like you see your sibling or your parent in public and you're like mm, no just completely avoid them right but what what is true is that no matter how you feel about it you guys are family. That's just a reality. And that's also true for us as we, we remember the baptism promises that God has made and the work that is done is we're just, we're just a part of the family. Not because of anything we've done. You don't like earn your way into a family. You just are a part of one. And that's also true of the family of God. And I love these verses at the end of the, the part we just read. There's no longer any Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. These are things that typically would have been seen as opposites, things that don't go together. And what, what we're reading here in Scripture is that God says that because of Jesus, those things now go together. The world so often wants to define us and divide us. We want to find our identity in something else. Whether it's you're a Jew or a Gentile, a slave or a free, or a male or a female, or you want to be identified by your academic prowess or your athletics or by the school that you go to or the people you hang out with or the, the gender that you identify as or the sexuality that you identify as. That we, there's this desire in our world to define ourselves and divide ourselves over and against any other thing. And what baptism does is it says every single one of us are a part of the family of God. And no matter how you want to define or divide yourself, you belong to God and you belong to his family. That in Jesus, we are all one brought together and you are unique and designed with a specific purpose, but you're all part of the same family. You get accepted and you have a place to belong. And you don't need to make up your own identity or, or define yourself by a particular thing. The thing that defines us most is Jesus. And that's what baptism reminds us of over and over again. So I'd like for you guys 
to talk for just a couple of minutes and ask these two questions. First, what are some things that people use to define or divide themselves against? Maybe it can be in your friend group or your school or the people that uh, hang around you and that you know. What are some of those things that are used to define and divide us? And then also, what are some of the things that help you feel like you belong and are accepted? Take a few minutes and chat together as a group. Identity is such an important thing that the reason defining ourselves feels so important is because we want to know who we are. We want to know when and where we belong. Who are our people? Where are we safe and accepted? And that's why this scripture is so important. And the, the promises that we look back on and remember in baptism can root us in some really key realities. And one of the realities is, is not just that we are loved by God and part of his family, but none of that depends on us. Let's hit that middle verse here. We talked about the being children of God and how that doesn't divide us in that last verse, but verse 27 says, all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. I love this picture. We get joined together with Jesus is what it says there. We put on Christ like we put on new clothes. And baptism tells the story of Jesus dying and rising to new life. And the Bible uses this kind of language over and over again. Taking off the old self, the old man, the old life, and living a new life. Putting on the new self, living in the new man or the new woman. That there's this old and new, and all that comes from, not just from us being better and trying harder, but from... Jesus. We don't put on better behavior. We put on Jesus. And that's why baptism is so important, that we actually, we get to put on the identity of Jesus. Did you actually know that Jesus got baptized? It's not just something he commands us to do. It's something that he himself did. It says he did that to fulfill all righteousness. In Matthew 3, uh, verses 13 through 17, tells the story of Jesus getting baptized. And this is actually one of the first times that the Trinity comes together. You see God the Father speaking to the Son and the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven. We see all the pieces of who God is come together and it ends with this verse in 17 that Father God says to Jesus, this is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. That's who Jesus is the dearly loved son of Father God. And so when we put on Jesus, that's what we get. Not because we do great things, not because we're awesome, but because of this incredible thing that baptism points back to, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that we get to take on for ourselves. So we put on Jesus like putting on a new set of clothes. And one of the things I find is people are like, oh. I like the idea of baptism. I'm going to follow Jesus, but I got to get some things sorted out in my life first. Like, okay, I'm going to follow Jesus. I haven't got this sorted out. I'm not really reading my Bible yet. You know, I'm still struggling with this. And so once I deal with that, then I can get baptized because we don't believe the story that baptism tells us. The story that baptism tells us is that all right, we are accepted by God, part of his family, and all of that is done through Jesus, not through us. Baptism isn't about us getting ourselves cleaned up. It's not like the water washes us clean. It reminds us that Jesus has already done that. So we can lose our way and we can scramble to find our identity in something else, in someone else even, and we can look back instead at our baptism the promises that God has made and the way that he's reminded us of that, of that symbol. It's sort of like that, that band t-shirt or that souvenir or that Instagram post that reminds us of the great thing that happens. We can look back and remember and root ourselves in the truth that it's not about us. It's not about how well we follow Jesus. 
It's about all the work that Jesus has done. Because far too often, we can believe that we're following rules when we really should be following Jesus. Our righteousness isn't rooted in ourselves. It's rooted in what Jesus has already done. And baptism reminds us of that. But that brings up a really great question. If it's all about Jesus and his grace to me and his forgiveness, then does it really matter how I live? If I just keep on sinning, does that matter to God? So this is balance of, of honoring God with, with our lives and trusting in his grace. What does it mean to be joined together with Jesus, to be his dearly loved child? And does that matter to how I live? So what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to point you to another scripture now. I'm going to get you to take a few minutes to open God's word together as a group and discuss this. So together, take a look at Romans 6 verses 1 through 8 and ask these questions. Does it matter how much we sin and how does baptism change us? I hope that as you've opened up God's word, it's been really clear to you that how we live does matter. But it doesn't matter because we need to do that to begin, to become accepted by God, but we do that because we have been accepted by God. And because God accepts us, we're learning to live as a part of this family that God invites us into. That, and baptism is a reminder of this, that God accepts us, loves us, invites us into his family, and it doesn't rest on us we're still accepted. But I want to end with this, that baptism is an act of immediate obedience. In the book of Acts chapter 2, uh, it tells a story of, of uh, this big sermon and all these people starting to follow God, and they say, okay, so our hearts are convicted. What must we do to be saved? And Peter, who's the guy giving this message, says two things. Repent, and be baptized. What he doesn't say is repent, stop looking at porn, and then be baptized. He doesn't say repent, start reading your Bible and praying, and then be baptized. He doesn't say repent, stop swearing, be nicer to people, and then be baptized. He says repent and be baptized. Jesus actually, when he's ascending to heaven, says, you know, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That the baptism actually comes before the teaching. That so often we think baptism is this seal that we put on for ourselves, but what it's actually is a reminder of what has already been done. And some of us have believed for far too long that we can't get baptized because we're still struggling, because there's still sin in our lives. And what I'm telling you today is repent and be baptized. To put your trust fully in Jesus, not yourself, not your own ability to clean up your own life, to be washed by the work of Jesus that makes us clean. You don't make you clean. You're not following rules. You're following Jesus. And so Jesus tells us through the scriptures, repent and be baptized. So if you are a follower of Jesus and you haven't been baptized yet, I'm going to encourage you to do that as soon as you can. Actually, this coming Sunday uh, is Easter Sunday. And what a beautiful day to remember the promises that God has kept and made to you and then have that special reminder that you can look back on. And I'm going to encourage you to not start your relationship with Jesus in disobedience. If Jesus tells us to get baptized, we should probably get baptized and not make excuses because this is the easy part. Imagine how much harder it is when, when God says like, okay, but now I'm going to ask you to do something different with your money. I'm going to ask you to do something different in your sexuality. I'm going to ask you to do something different in your relationships with other people. I'm going to ask you to forgive when that feels impossible. Because we so often believe that those things rely on us and our ability to muster it up, 
We've got this whole thing out of whack. So we repent and then we get baptized because then we can be rooted and reminded of the finished work of Jesus, that we are loved and accepted by God, that we are a part of his family and none of that rests on us. It's all finished, all complete, handed to us, that we get to put on Christ. We get to be joined with Jesus like putting on new clothes and then live out of that. That we don't change so that we can be baptized. We are baptized and then we lived new and changed lives. So as we close, I'm gonna pray for us and then in your D group material, there's a couple of scriptures that you guys can look at to, to dig into this a little bit further. But I would encourage you, if you are a follower of Jesus and you haven't been baptized, to really consider doing that as soon as you can. If you have been baptized, but you've sort of lost your way, to take some time and look back on the promises that God has made to root yourself, to put on Jesus, to be joined with him, and then live out of those realities that you are accepted, that you have an identity, that you do belong, and it doesn't rest on you. And if you aren't yet a follower of Jesus and you haven't yet been baptized, would you see the beauty of rooting your identity in something that you don't have to chase down or achieve or go after on your own, but in the finished work of a God who loves you and makes a way to be connected. We love you guys. Have a great time discussing this in D Group, and we'll see you next time.